if you've got your Bibles, turn to the book of Acts chapter 19. I have a question to ask you today. Does the devil know your name? Does the devil know your name? Acts chapter 19 is a very, very interesting portion of Scripture because there's a moment where Paul um, goes to a uh, group of believers in the city of Ephesus and he asks them if they had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they said, well, we've only heard of uh, John's baptism, so we're not sure what you're talking about. And the Bible says that as he preached, then the Holy Spirit came upon them all, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying as a result of that. Um, kind of First Baptist Church became First Assembly of God in, in <laughs> Ephesus. Don't get mad at me. I got saved in a Baptist church. I'm just having fun. Okay. Uh, but what happened after that is very interesting. And that's actually where our passage picks up today. Now, here's my observation of Bethel Church in the last few months. For those of you who may not know, I've been here a little while. Uh, <laughs> 23 years I've been here. And um, it's been wonderful. Sometimes it seems like 40, other times it seems like four. It depends on the week, right? <laughs> and, uh, but what I've seen uh, in 2024 so far, has been, uh, has been a number of lives that have been touched dramatically by the power of Jesus Christ. God has healed people. God has moved mildly. We've regularly seen the gifts of the Spirit in operation in one way, shape, or form, either the spoken gifts or people simply laying hands on people and they are healed. The interesting thing is, how do we respond uh, to a move of God like that? When God begins to move in a dramatic way, when God begins to move in a different way, not even in a church, but in, in my life, what's, what's the response to that? I told my staff recently, it's one thing to pray for a move of God, it's another thing to pastor a move of God. And those of you who've ever worked in a church know what I'm talking about. Um, we find a situation where the Holy Spirit is moving dramatically in the city of Ephesus, and there are different responses that I want to uncover today for us to be aware of when God begins to move, not just in your church, but also in your life. How do we respond to that? If God is beginning to do something significant, not only in your church, but also in your life, and hopefully they're both happening. Amen? Amen? What's our response? What are some of the possible responses? I want to show you. And I think this will be a good lesson for us to learn here today. So, if you're able to, I'm going to invite you to stand with me for the reading of God's Word. I appreciate Alex and Noah filling in for Sue and Keith, who are on a Disney cruise suffering for Jesus Christ right now. <laughs> Goodness. And just to rub it in, Sue sent me a picture of her steak. I thought, man, I was eating takeout, and, and it, was just, it was not good timing, Sue, but I prayed through. So, guys, thank you for filling in back there, and they have told me, please don't run around side to side as much as you usually do. So I will be sensitive to you guys. I'm going to try, but sometimes I get excited. So, we ready? Okay, if you don't have your Bible, follow on the screen. Here we go. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the, the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva. A Jewish chief priest were doing this. 
One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly when they calculated the value of the scrolls. The total came to 50,000 drachmas, and in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. So Lord, I pray that you would uh, warn us, that you would guide us, that you would draw us even closer to you. God, as we examine what your word has to say, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would speak to those that are hearing us today, whether many online, uh, those that are here, God, touch them, I pray. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. 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 You may be seated. I've never gotten so many text messages during church of people who are telling me they're watching us online right now. So hello, folks. We love you. And uh, looking forward to seeing you face to face again. Um, So let's jump into this. Does the devil, (laughs) does the devil know your name? I've always said that there are two people that need to be well acquainted with you, or at least know of you. One would be Jesus, but the other would be our enemy. That usually doesn't get an amen. (laughs) But are we such a force for the kingdom of God that the enemy is well aware of that? And so with that in mind, I want to take a look at three parts of the story today that uh, I think we can learn from, and not just learn. I just don't want to disseminate information to you today. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you in a big way today. Number one, here's the first part of the story. I'm going to call it the supernatural. The supernatural. Students, it starts with S today. I hope you, <laughs> hope you got it. For those of you who don't know, the students like to guess my letter that I use for all the sermons. It's a big contest. So uh, I don't think there's money involved, but uh, I hope not. Um, If there is, let me know. We'll just see what we can do. We'll fix the thing. I get half, you get half, it works. All right. So the supernatural, eh, that's a great way to do your sermon. Uh, So let's look at verses 11 and 12 again. You ready? God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So that even, even handkerchiefs and aprons that had, been, that had touched him were then taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Now, how many of you know that's a pretty good service? Can you say amen? That's pretty amazing stuff going on there. And here's what I want to tell you, that the power of God is still present today and can be present in your life. And let me just say this. If you want the power of God to be demonstrated in your church house, then it really ought to be demonstrated in your own house. And the problem is, in the 21st century church, oftentimes we kind of go to the church house to try to get our fill of of spiritual things, and hopefully that's going to last us for six days, and then we'll come crawling back to God's house and try to get another meal uh, so that it can sustain us. And I don't think that's the way that God has designed it. I honestly believe that uh, you can actually see the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation, not just between 10 and noon on Sunday, but you could actually see the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation when you're in the grocery store. You could see the Holy Spirit at work when you're at Walmart. You better have the Holy Spirit when you're at Walmart, right? And a good pair of pajamas, apparently. So, so you need the Holy Spirit there. 
But is it possible? Is it possible? Is it, see, here's the thing. I believe that the moving of the Holy Spirit is not only for the time that we worship corporately. I believe that the moving of the Holy Spirit is also there for us when we are at the workplace praying for somebody who is hurting, praying for a person who is in pain, that God can actually do a miracle right there in the break room, right there on the campus. How many of you can say amen to that? See, that's why, that, that's why the Holy Spirit fills us to begin with. He does so so that we can walk in the Spirit when we're away from here. Yes, praise God for what He does in the church. I like that. I love it. It's wonderful. Want more of it. But here's the... Did I just quote a country song? I think I did. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. I did. All right. But, but God really wants to move outside of here. He really wants to move outside of here as well. And my whole thing, my whole thing is this. Oh, Lord, please don't make us a Christian club. God, make us a group of people that walk this out when we leave this place. Make us a group of people that live this out when we're outside of the church house. Can you say amen? Because here's what I believe. God is still the healer. God is still the provider. And God is still the deliverer. And we have hope. That seems to have been a theme that God has given us. That as well as having this great move of God, we've had some people in our church family that have been touched by some really difficult things. But here's what I know. My hope is in the Lord. My hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and his righteousness. I am confident in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? So I believe that the gifts and the workings of the Holy Spirit did not end with the work of the apostles. Well, pastor, I saw a YouTube video that says otherwise. YouTube is not your final authority. I'm going to tell you again, anybody can make a YouTube video. That doesn't make them an expert. I said it doesn't make them an expert. Yeah, but they got graphics. That doesn't make them an expert. What's our source? Where do we go to? We go to the Word of God. If we don't get it, if we don't understand it when we read the Word of God, God has given us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers so that we can learn more. I celebrate the fact that we have so many that attend the discipleship class uh, during our Sunday school hour. That place, if we grow anymore, I, we're, I've got to put you in the parking lot. I just, I don't know what we're going to do. We just got so many. I love the hunger there. I love that because we're, we're not just getting a, a service fix, but we're, we're learning about the word. We're growing in our faith in Jesus Christ. And as we grow, God does more through us and in us and for us. Can you say Amen. So that's the easy part, is the supernatural. I believe that the supernatural is available to each and every one of us. But then we keep reading this story, and not only do we see a demonstration of the supernatural, but then we see some surprises. <laughs> this story takes a turn, a big turn. <laughs> Let me read it for you, starting in verse 13. You ready? Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Seven PKs, okay? Seven, don't worry, son. Seven, seven preacher's kids. Okay? They're going around doing the same thing. One day, the evil spirit answered them, saying, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. That is a bad service. Wait, good service first, bad service now. 
What's going on here? What's going on here? You know what you're seeing? You're actually seeing some really bad reactions to the power and the Spirit of God is what you're seeing. And I want to expose a danger that can creep up in the church, especially one that wants the Holy Spirit to move in a big way. Merely imitating spiritual methods or spiritual maturity will result in disaster. Let's talk about the methods. The seven preacher's kids, the seven sons of Sceva, or if you have a retainer, the seven sons of Sceva. I just had to say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad youth group joke, and it just pops up in my 50s. What did they do? They saw what worked and said, wow, if I follow the script... Maybe I'll see those results too. And hmm, what I have seen many times are people that will watch a move of God and just think, if I merely imitate that, the same thing will happen for us. Now, you're looking at a guy who uh, was part of a great move of God in Columbus, Ohio. At a time when there was an incredible move of God taking place in Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> Pensacola, Florida. And I'm not here to debate you as to whether it was legit or not. I'll just tell you, it was legit. And if you want to argue about that, don't. And... Uh, but here's what, I, here's what I saw. Okay. I saw people saying, wow, you know what? If we just sing the same songs they sing, we'll be the next hotbed of the Holy Spirit. And if we put red jackets on our ushers, <laughs> like they have red jackets, it's going to happen in our place too. And, and I thought... Are you kidding me? It's like the Holy Spirit is saying, oh, I want to pour myself out on a group of, look, red jackets, woo, and, and that, that's not how it works. Let's go further. The seven sons of Sceva were trying to get the spiritual results without having the spiritual relationship. You don't dare mess with darkness if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't mess with it. This is why Christians have no business, I want you to hear this, you have no business following a horoscope, you have no business having your kids or you play with Ouija boards, you have no business dabbling in any, you don't mess with the darkness. You don't do it. You don't do it. Because just as the seven sons of Sceva discovered in a very bad way, when you mess with the darkness without having that relationship on the inside, with the Holy Spirit inside of you, you're in for a lot of pain and a lot of disaster. You cannot achieve spiritual greatness simply by imitating something that you saw on a YouTube clip. It comes from within. Because right. here's what I've discovered. God is, God is what we call sovereign. Can I just unload on you here? God is sovereign. So he's going to do whatever he wants to do. And he'll do it in the way that he wants to do it. And we get in trouble when, you ready? When we try to compare what 
one person does and what you do, how one person is spiritual and how you are, how one church acts and how another church acts, we get in serious trouble when we start doing that. What we need to do is just focus on our own salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't mess with the darkness unless you have a relationship, a solid relationship with Jesus Christ. The seven sons of Sceva, they, they discovered it the hard way that you dare not imitate, imitate spiritual methodology or spiritual maturity. It doesn't come from without, it comes from within. See, that's why I, I, I don't... I, <laughs> I don't judge one's spiritual maturity by how loud they are or how high they jump. In fact, a wise person once told me that usually the loudest boxcar on the train is the emptiest. But there's a difference between naming Jesus and knowing Jesus. It's the people that know their God that will do great exploits, the scripture says. Oh, that we would know Jesus. Why? Why did we bring on a staff member whose primary role is discipleship? Because we need to be a people that know our, not know about Jesus, but we know Jesus. How many of you know the difference? Right? I know about Shaquille O'Neal. Okay? Shaq's not going to invite me over for dinner anytime soon. Why? But wait, Shaq, I know where you went to college. I saw you on that Papa John's commercial. We're like, and, and he'd say, I never knew you. <laughs> Actually, he'd say, get out of my face. And <laughs> And we claim just because we can recite trivia and recite Bible knowledge that we know Jesus personally. And I got to tell you, one of the most scary scriptures that I've ever read in my life, I meant to put it up and I didn't, are when people come up to Jesus and they say, we did miracles in your name. We prophesied in your name. And, G and, and the Lord looks at them and says, depart from me, I never knew you. We've got to be a people that know. Not about Jesus. We know Jesus. Going through the motions will bring great pain to your spiritual life. Don't get caught up in it. I'm speaking to second, third, maybe fourth generation church people in here. Some of you, you're the first generation in your family, so I'm not talking to you right now. But those of us who have been raised in it, we know how to do it. We do. I used to sit in my church in Rock Falls, Illinois. And I knew between the fifth and sixth song that Sister LaVon was going to say something from God. I just knew it. Why? Because she did it all the time. I'm not making fun of it. I just kind of had it down. I knew that hymn number 240 was victory in Jesus. In fact, we had a contest. Can you name that hymn? And then we'd say the number and boom. Some of you have no idea what a hymnal is, but that's okay. <laughs> It's this book with songs and music. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that person that knows churchy things. I don't want to be that person that just knows about Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to know him. I say, well, pastor, you're ordained. I, 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 I still want to know him. Paul even said this, that everything that I've done, I just consider it garbage compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Lord, thanks for the memories. Thanks for the things you've done in the past, but I want to know you better. And that takes me to our last part of this story. We've looked at the supernatural. We've looked at some surprises that took place, but look at this incredible example of... Ooh, should say surrender, but that's okay. Should say surrender. It's my fault. Uh, surrender. Look at verses 17 through 20. It says, When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear. 
and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believe now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. And this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Let me be honest with you. Total surrender to Christ will always be costly. It's going to cost you something. I didn't know that. I just want to go to heaven. Well, good for you. But, but there's more to this. There's much more to this. Do you hear that little thing, 50,000 drachmas? Being a nerd, I did the math. A drachma was one day's wage. So, 50,000 drachmas, I'm just kind of doing some rough math for you, would equal 137 years of wages. So I thought, hmm, let's find the average salary in Akron, Ohio. (laughs) Yes, Lord. I don't know who that was, but he sounded godly. (laughs) Follow that guy. (laughs) So I took the average salary in Akron, and I multiplied it by 137 years of wages. Do you know how expensive this bonfire was? 6.165 million dollars. That's an expensive act of surrender. The problem with the 21st century church is that many of us, we want the benefits of God, but we won't consider the cost. It's going to cost you something. You're you're going to have to leave something behind. But here's the beauty of this whole thing. God will always replace that with something better. I should say that again. That thing that you surrender to God, I honestly believe the Lord will fill that void with something far better. And that is the response when God begins to do great things. Wow, I dare say, can you imagine if they had social media when the seven sons of Sceva got beat up? Can you imagine the social media firestorm that would have... That never happens, does it? It does. And I will tell you that... It's just a side note. That if something difficult happens in a church or a ministry, the last thing the body of Christ needs to do is just pile on and pile on and pile on that minister or his ministry. Well, it's my calling to expose other churches for what they're doing wrong. Where do you go to church? I always love to ask that question. They tell me, where do you go to church? I don't go to church. (laughs) I figured. Just me in the basement with my mama. And... This past week, for example, we, we saw a, a controversy. It, it seems to happen every week in one way, shape, or form in the body of Christ. And people's reaction to that tends to be so over the top. I demand that they do this and that. You know what? Here's, here's what I posted. Maybe you saw it on my social media. How about we focus on our own church and not worry about a church that's three states away? How about we pray for our ministers? How about we pray for the kingdom of God? 
How about we lift one another up instead of putting other people down? It's not my ministry, and, and we will not. We will not make a, uh, an effort to put other ministries down unless, unless there's bad doctrine or people are being misled. Then, boom, I'll go after that ministry. Not even the minister. But here's the deal. I think we need to understand that all of this can be a serious distraction to God's best for all of us. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Press on to Jesus. Surrender everything to Jesus. Don't worry about what other ministry is doing or saying. Or I, I don't. God can take care of it. God will take care of it. I think God's standing in heaven saying, oh no, he did that. God knows, okay? He's good. He's good. Let's just be obedient. Let's just do what the Lord wants us to do. $6.165 million. Are you kidding me? Some of us may not want to surrender to God if it cost us six bucks. Six plus million dollar bonfire. But did you see the results? Christina, can, can you show them verse 20 again? In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Not one sermon preached. No social media. But they saw a city totally surrender to the Savior and the Spirit moved mightily. Don't underestimate what God can do through your act of surrender to Him. If the hymn that you're singing is I surrender most, make it I surrender all to you, God. Everything. Why? Because Jesus, you gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. Last slide. Jonathan, if you could help me out. It says this. The value of surrendering to Jesus will always be greater than the cost. Those of you who are investors, you'll know you might invest in something that can go good or bad. Especially in today's market. You make an investment of yourself to the kingdom of God there will always be a return, a positive return. The value of surrendering to Jesus Christ totally will outweigh the cost of whatever it is you have to give up with. I speak to the person today that has held on to something and held on to something and held on to something and you know it displeases God and you know you have no business having that in your life. Would you burn a scroll today? Would you just turn that over to Jesus and say, I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm finished with it. No more. No more. That act can cause God to move greatly. <laughs> Does the devil know your name? Are we such a force for the kingdom of God that he's well acquainted with who Bethel Church is? He's well acquainted with who we are. Why? Because you are 100% sold out to the Lord. Not holding anything back. Not turning back, as the song says. But giving everything completely to Him. Not faking it. Not going through the motions. Giving everything completely to Him. And, and you want the supernatural? That is a natural byproduct of a group of people that will do just that. Will you stand with me? So my question is, is there something to the, that you need to surrender to the Lord? Today is the day to do that. I'm afraid to give that up, Pastor. He'll replace it with something better. Don't worry about the cost. Embrace the value. Embrace the value. 
have you been going through the motions spiritually? Knowing the what without the who? (laughs) The Lord would really like to turn that around. Get to know me. Not a bunch of methodology. Get to know me. And, And do you need his power displayed in your life? Maybe you need God to heal you. I know we already prayed for that. Maybe you need God to do something tremendous in your life. God is in this place, and he will give you that. Not imitating anything, not trying to work something. We just say, God, I need your power. I need your healing. I need your help. He's here today. Will you bow your heads? I want to pray for you today. I wonder today, is there anyone here? You have not committed your life fully to Jesus Christ. You kind of know the what, but you don't know the who. You, you, you know what's going on in church, but you don't know whom you're doing it for. You, you, you know enough that, uh, well, you know, you, you sure, you certainly want to go to heaven, but, but I, I got to tell you, there's more. There's so much more. The Lord would say, give me that thing you're holding on to that's holding you back. Give me that thing that you're keeping that's, that's preventing you from receiving my best. Give me that too. And the Lord will do that. You'll say, Pastor, I got a scroll and I need to surrender to the Lord. Hands are already going up. You'll say, that's what I need. I need God to help me with some scrolls in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe it's been a while since you've had a spiritual growth spurt. Maybe you could say, Lord, today, I just want to give you my all. I want things to change between me and you. I don't want to just know about you. I want to know you. I want to know you. And if that's a new commitment you want to make today, I want to pray for you as well. If that is you, could you also slip up your hand? I want to pray for you. Yes, yes, yes. I want to know you. Yes, I don't want to. Yes, I don't want to know just about you. I want to know you. Hallelujah. You can all put your hands down. Praise God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And if you need a touch from God, we're going to pray for you as well today. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray over those, especially those that raise their hand. But we're not going to stop there. We're, we're, we're going to give you a chance to be in his presence and just talk to him. Because some of you need the courage to give up the thing that you've been hanging on to. Some of you need to be reassured that it's worth it. So I want his Holy Spirit to do that for you today. Some of you, you want God to totally change your life. I'm going to pray that God does that today. So after I get done praying, I'm going to give you a chance to get alone with him. Either at this altar, maybe at your seat, whatever is the most comfortable for you to do so. I want you to call out to the Lord. And ask him, change your life. Change your life. And take away those things that are holding you back. So Jesus, I come to you in your mighty and matchless name. I'm asking you, Lord, that you would hear the prayers of your people. God, we have a number who've been holding on to something. And it's hurting them spiritually. God, today we surrender it to you. We say, God, take it. Take it. I don't want it anymore. Have your way, Jesus. And God, I'm praying that you would fill that void with the goodness of God. Fill that void, Lord Jesus, with everything that you have for him or her. May they not worry about what they're losing, God. May they be thrilled with what they're gaining. God, I pray for changed lives in this place. That you would totally and radically change people. Give us a hunger to know you. Not about you, but to know you, Jesus. And God, let your Holy Spirit move in this place. God, that you would heal sick and broken bodies. Lord, that you would touch marriages. God, that you would set people free. 
God, we'll thank you for all you do. Help us to live this out this week. And to those that are praying, Lord, I pray that you would speak to them through your Holy Spirit now as we wait on you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to respond to God, do so right now. If God's released you, you can consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. Let's seek the Lord together today.